Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about the nomenclature for alcohols. I think you're going to find this is very similar to the other nomenclature we've done so far, which is a couple additional rules specific to alcohols. So we're going to use largely the same procedure. The big difference is we're going to use the suffix ol to indicate the presence of an alcohol, just like we would use ene to indicate the presence of an alkene. So as is usual, our first step is to identify the parent chain. Uh, and just like when we did alkenes and alkynes, the, the parent chain had to include the double bond or the triple bond. The same thing is true here. The parent chain has to include the OH. We then identify and name the substituents, just like we would in other cases. And we assign a, a locant or give a, a position to each substituent. When we're numbering the parent chain, the, we want the OH to be the lowest number possible. So that's very similar to when we were doing alkenes and alkynes. All right, then we put the name together. Uh, we list the substituents in alphabetical order before the parent name. Uh, remember that we ignore prefixes in the alphabetization except for iso and cyclo. And then we give the position of the OH group uh, just before the parent name, or we can give it just before the OL suffix. Okay, so I'd like to look at a couple of these rules in a little bit more detail, and then we'll finish off with a couple examples. So the big difference uh, in alcohols is the suffix. So just a five carbon chain would be pentane. When we have an alcohol group, when we have an OH group, then it would be pentanol. When you're determining the main chain, remember that the parent chain must contain the OH group, right? So in this case, the parent would be octane, but in this case, because the OH has to be part of the parent chain, the longest I could get is six, and so then this would be hexanol. All right, the other thing to remember is when we're numbering the parent chain, we want the OH to have the lowest number possible, and it gets priority over double bonds and triple bonds. Right? When we learned how to name alkenes and alkynes, we said that we wanted the double bond to have the lowest number possible, but the OH gets priority over that. So in this case, we would start numbering here with 1. Okay, now when we give the locant or the position of the OH, we can either give it before the parent name, so we could call it 3-pentanol in this case, or we could put the locant just before the suffix, and so it could be pentan 3 all. When I can, I usually like to use the first method. I think it just sounds more natural, but as we'll see when we start mixing functional groups, particularly if I mix alkenes with alcohols, we have to use this second option for where we put the locant. All right, when we name cyclic alcohols, the OH group is always on carbon 1, and so because that's understood, you generally don't have to give a position for the OH group. So I don't have to call this one cyclopentanol, I can just call it cyclopentanol. And even when I have other substituents, while I would give numbers to the methyls in this case, because it's understood the OH is going to be on carbon 1, I don't have to give that position. So it's just 3,3-dimethylcyclopentanol. Um, when we have chiral centers, we need to give those configurations just like we did in naming alkanes. All right, just like alkyl halides, we very often talk about alcohols being primary, secondary, or tertiary. And this works the same way it did for the alkyl halides. A primary alcohol means that the carbon that is attached to the OH is attached to one other carbon. And a secondary alcohol that carbon that's attached to the OH that we call the alpha carbon is attached to two other carbons. And in a tertiary alcohol, the alpha carbon is attached to three other carbons. Okay, as you've probably noticed, benzene shows up a lot in organic chemistry, as, as do benzene derivatives. And so we have a special name when we have an OH attached directly to a benzene ring. This compound is called phenol. And when I put other substituents on it, um, it's going to be a derivative of phenol, and the parent name is going to be phenol. And I can give uh, the positions of the other substituents and end it with phenol. That tells me that there's an OH on this benzene ring. So I start numbering from the OH. So to get the lowest numbers possible, I'd have 1, 2, 3, 4. So this would be 4-chloro-2-methyl-phenol. All right, so I'm going to finish off with a couple examples. So, as is generally the case, the first thing I'll do is identify the parent chain. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
or I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it doesn't matter, they're each gonna be the same length. Um, and then when I'm numbering, I want the OH to have the smallest number possible. So my numbering is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, then I'll identify my substituents. So I have a five ethyl. I have three methyl groups. So that's gonna be two, four, four, trimethyl. The only other substituent is the alcohol and that's gonna be part of the, the parent name. And so put them in alphabetical order. The E comes before the M in methyl. So I have 5-ethyl, 2-4-4, trimethyl, and then I'll give the parent name. I'll put the locant for the OH in front of the parent name. So it's going to be 2 heptanol. All right, and then there are no chiral centers or double bonds, so I don't have to worry about assigning any of those configurations, so that would be the complete name. Okay, here's another example, and I wanted to specifically give one where we have both an OH and a double bond. Right now, the OH gets priority. So uh, I would start, right, the chain's not hard to find, right? In this case, that's my longest chain, and I want the OH to have the lowest number possible. So I'd start numbering carbon one here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have one substituent, so I have a 6-methyl. Now, when we name alkenes, we would use the ene suffix. When we name alcohols, we use the ol suffix. And so I have to use them both. And so in this case, I'm not going to put the locants in front of the parent name. I'm going to put the locants directly before the suffixes. And I'll actually use both su suffixes. So in this case, I have 6 methyl, and then it's going to be octene all, uh, because I need to get both the ene uh, and the ol, and so I'm going to have oct five ene one all. So I've accounted for both the double bond and the alcohol. And in this case, I can't put the locants in front of the parent name because I wouldn't know which one refers to the double bond and which one refers to the OH. So in this case, put the locants just before the suffixes. All right, now we have to be careful. If we have chiral centers, we have to indicate that. In this case, when I have double bonds, I need to check and see if it's stereoisomeric and I ha whether I have the E or the Z isomer. This one is stereoisomeric. So I'll from each carbon, I want to identify the group that has the higher priority. So on the carbon six, the ethyl has a higher priority than the um, than the methyl. And on carbon five, right, this big thing has the higher priority than the H uh, that's here. So the two higher priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. So that makes it E. So I have, to finish off the name, it's E6-methyl, oct5-ene-1-all. All right, let's go on to the next example. Okay, here's an example of a cyclic alcohol. And you may have noticed, right, they're showing us dashes and wedges, indicating that I probably have some chiral centers. I usually worry about that at the end. I usually do the rest of the name, then assign the configurations for the chiral centers at the end. Now, in this case, my base is going to be, or my parent is going to be cyclopentane, right? And then the OH is going to be at carbon one. So I'll start numbering it here. And then I have to decide, should I number it counterclockwise or should I number it clockwise, 
right? And so the first thing we do is we want the numbers on the substituents to be as low as possible. If those are tied, then we would go in alphabetical order. Um, but in this case, I think we can break it with the numbers of the substituents, right? If I number it counterclockwise, it would be one, two, three, three, four. So my substituents would be one, three, three, and four. If I went the other way, my substituents would be one, two, three, four, five. It would be one, three, four, four. So I can get lower numbers on my substituents if I number it counterclockwise. So that's what I have to do. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So I have a 4-chloro, I have a 3,3-dimethyl, so my name is going to be, uh, the C in the chloro comes before the M of the methyl, so I have 4-chloro, three, 3 dimethyl I don't have to give the 1 for the cyclo pentanol for the OL. I don't have to say where the OH is because it's understood to be at number one. So then I'm going to finish it off with cyclo pentanol. And so then the last thing I need to do is I need to assign the RNS configurations for my two chiral centers. So let's do this one first. So I'm going to switch to a different color. So I'm assigning this chiral center. So I think in terms of priority the OH is going to be 1. Then when I go out to the carbons, I've got a CH2 and a CH2, so those are tied. So I go to the next carbon. This carbon is attached to three carbons, so its list would be CCC. This list would be chlorine carbon hydrogen, but the chlorine beats the carbon, so this is going to have the higher priority. So I have 2 and priority 3. right? And so the hydrogen is on the back. So I don't have to swap anything. So one, two, three, I'm going clockwise. So that means that this chiral center has an R configuration. All right, let me switch to a different color for this chiral center. So the chlorine again is gonna be one. The one that's got the two methyls coming off it is gonna be two. And then that carbon is gonna be three. In this case, the hydrogen is on a wedge, so I really need to switch that chlorine and the hydrogen, so my configuration is going to be the opposite of what it appears, right? So when I look, I'm going 1, 2, 3, I'm going clockwise, so that makes it look like R, but because I have to switch the chlorine and the hydrogen, it's going to be the opposite, so it, this configuration is S. So I have, to finish off my name, carbon 1 is R. So I have 1R, I have 4S, 4-chloro-3,3-dimethyl cyclopentanol. Okay, one more example. Here I have a benzene with an OH, so my parent chain is going to be phenol, and so I just need to put the other groups on. So I have, um, and when I do the numbering, right, to get the, the substance as low as possible, Again, the OH is, has to be 1, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, because then I'll have 1, 2, and 4, as opposed to going the other way, in which case I'd have uh, 1, 4, 6. So my numbering is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have a 2-ethyl, I have a 4-isopropyl, and so my name is then going to be 2-ethyl-4-isopropyl phenol. Just like with the cyclic um, cycloalkane, I don't have to give the position of the OH. It's understood to be at 1.